uh, my, uh, my dog, he peed on my mat. The other day, so I just hosed it off. It was gross. Anyways, hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen again. This whole room's gonna be uh, fixed up. Just wait and see. Anyways, uh, we're starting a new series today. I think, I think it's a new series. I need that. This new series, I think it's new, by the way. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Glad you're uh, along for the journey. Make sure you hit that like button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And also comment below. Let me know if you like this new series and the way we uh, are putting, we, when I say we, I mean me, the way I am putting this together for you. Let me know if you like it, okay? Uh, always trying to try something different, spice things up a little. So let me know if you like this and we'll keep it going. If you don't, forget it, we'll throw it away. It's up to you guys, let me know. There's the culprit right there. That's the pee dog right there. She's the one who peed on my mat. Okay, so this new series we're doing is called Saving Par. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna learn from the huge mistakes I've made on course and my course management abilities. We're gonna look back at those. It's always good to reflect on what you did good and what you didn't do so well. So we're gonna do that and I'm gonna take you through my mistakes and how I corrected them so that you can apply that to your own game and hopefully we can save more pars. So uh, what, what, what happens is I like to go swim and I start thinking. There's not much to do while you're swimming, doing laps. Good exercise. I need it for my back, my arms get in shape. And uh, so that's where I think about all this stuff because you're just swimming forever. So I'm gonna do that and we're gonna talk a little bit about saving par and the ways it can be done easily if we just manage ourselves better. So that's what we're doing. Let's go get our swim on. <laughs> let's say set of bad decisions came at uh, Lake Arrowhead course. And there was a series of holes that I played that all my decisions were just wrong. Everything I did. So we wanted to learn from that. But you know, you, you take a shot on a hole, you hit a good drive, but then you just, you make the, the worst mistake. You short side yourself. Um, one, it was back pin, took too much club. Why would you take extra club on a back pin? You never do that. So I did that and it's uphill live, which you know you're gonna pull left, which I did and consequently made a bogey. Fantastic. You know, that's just poor decision number one. And then, you know, things just compound after that. You take another hole, you hit driver and you don't need a driver. Just because it's a long hole doesn't mean you have to have a driver. You have to be in position. It's, and I always say this, it's much better to be sh super okay. short okay. off the tee and in the fairway than long and in the trees. Now, unless you're Bryson DeChambeau or something, but I don't know, we'll see how that pays off long-term. But fairway is much better, even if you're hitting a longer second shot into the green. So, although I say par on this next hole, it was still poor decision making. And I tried to make up for it on the next hole, but still poor decision making because I'm trying to get maximum distance, get them in a very similar situation, equals another bogey. Just a series of poor decisions on my part when I didn't need to do that. We just want to make sure we're in the fairway as opposed to long off the tee. And for the average golfer, okay, average golfer, not the PGA Tour pros, for the average golfer, 
that's gonna pay off more often than not. The key, the key to getting, to working out or to, or to getting back in shape when you haven't worked out for a while is to start out slow. Just do a little, a little bit so you can come back tomorrow. Same applies in golf. If you're just getting back into it, go hit a little bucket, just a tiny bucket and build your stamina up. You don't wanna be so hurting that you're like, oh, I can't do it tomorrow. A little bit every day adds up. So remember, we're all gonna have bad stretches of holes where we're just making mental mistakes. Maybe it happens, for me it happens a lot um, when I'm playing poorly. And I just kind of like, I don't wanna say give up, but I, I kind of check out, I would say. I'm like, eh, whatever. And that's not good, because there's, there's many times something good around the corner there that you're gonna miss if you don't stay checked in. And the mistakes really came just because I didn't take the time to check where everything was. It was a tricky course, I never played there before, but still I could have played a lot smarter than I did. So fast forward to a couple weeks later at Stonebridge, Stonebridge, Bridgestone, whatever the name is. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, I recovered mentally. Should wear earplugs. Oh, well. Anyways, okay. So we're at uh, Stonebridge, Bridgestone. I always get that mixed up. So uh, we're at this 380 yard par four. Let me walk you through this hole, which you may have seen, but not really hear my thoughts about how I really approached it mentally. And doing that can save your day out there on the links. Here's how this went down. So I'm making a good decision by hitting the five wood off the tee, which was a smart play. However, I just hit the worst shot in the history of life and I nearly missed the ball. I topped it, I, I almost topped it so bad, but it was just as thin as you can hit it without topping it. Like one more gazillimeter and I would have topped the ball, but it didn't go anywhere. So a 380 yard par four, I have like 212 yards left out of the Bermuda. Now I had a relatively decent lie, so that helped things. I would have liked to have hit my hybrid, but I don't normally carry my hybrid in the bag. Um, well, I, I swapped it out because I played a different course where I liked having my three wood, um, and, but I didn't know I would need my hybrid here. Looking back, every time I go to this course, I'm going to bring my hybrid because there was a couple other shots that I wish I had had it as well but I went with the four iron because that was my only option. Now, mentally, what I was thinking was, bogey's fine, okay? Don't make a huge number, no doubles or triples. So I kind of knew what was up around the green. There was a green side bunker. I didn't mind being in that. I didn't mind being anywhere around that green. I just didn't want to be long. So I, I could have hit my five wood, but I would have had to have played, manufactured a shot, like a high cut or something. So instead, I didn't, and I knew I didn't want to go long because long is a difficult comebacker because of just how that green is shaped. So I'd rather be short coming into it or left or right is fine. I just didn't want to be past the pin. So that led me to my four iron. And from there, I just knew, hey, just get it up there somewhere. You're going to be short of the green. There's no way you're going to hit it. Not out of the rough at that distance. So I hit it. Okay shot, it wasn't fantastic. Just kind of run in the mill, four iron, little short right, which was fine. Now, now I'm in my wheelhouse. I have a 60 degree wedge, a little pitch up. There's really nothing to worry about here. Little bit of bunker, but I had so much room for everything. I, I don't even think that was really a concern of mine at all. There was nothing in the way. 
and the greens were relatively receptive and slow so and I had plenty of green to work with so again I'm not putting pressure on myself with this shot I'm just trying to get it up there and I knew again mentally I was going to need to make a pot so I hit a okay shot to 8 to 10 feet so I have a relatively good look at par and that's all I wanted after the tee shot so mentally my mindset is victory already. I've already won. No matter what happens, I succeeded. And so there would be no failing, right? The only failing after a horrible shot is if I make another mental mistake and I did not do that. Hit a good putt. I actually thought I missed the putt when I hit it because I felt like I pushed it a little, but it broke more than I thought. So I got lucky. So I felt like my, I was rewarded through luck because of my good decisions. That's kind of how I looked at it and said, hey, I got rewarded, I made good decisions, didn't hit a great putt, but I got rewarded because of the good decisions I made and therefore my putt went in and I saved that par and I went on to shoot three under 69 on the round. And it really came from there and I knew from that point going forward, I was not going to make any mental errors off the tee box or anywhere on the course and it paid off. So there you go, that's Saving Par, episode uno. And hope you like it. And comment below. Let me know if you like these, this style of video, and we'll make it a consistent thing. So we're just going over good mental things and course management stuff on course, and talking through it so we can improve, get better, get ready. We got, stuff, we got plans right here, it's gonna be great. Love you guys. Thanks for all the support. Appreciate it. Really do. See you in the next video.